My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we begin together the season of Lent, we all might benefit from a brief consideration of a famous exchange in Alice in Wonderland. Perhaps you remember a portion of Alice's conversation with the Cheshire Cat. Alice politely asked her smiling furry guru, who was sitting up in the tree, would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? That depends a good deal on where you want to get to, said the cat. I don't much care where, said Alice. Then it doesn't matter which way you go, said the cat. Where do we want to get to over the next 40 days? If we don't much care where Lent takes us, then it doesn't really matter which way you go. I don't know whether Pope Francis has ever read Lewis Carroll or talked with a Cheshire cat, but I believe the wisdom of Alice's furry friend would make sense to the Holy Father. In his message for the church this Lent, he reminds us all that this season is a time of renewal for the whole church for each community, and for every believer. Above all, it is a time of grace. God does not ask anything that he himself has not first given us. We love because he first loved us. God is not aloof from us. The Pope reasons that God's people then needs this time of interior renewal lest we become indifferent and withdraw into ourselves. Indifference says, Pope, indifference, says Pope Francis, is that fatal withdrawal into ourselves. He points out to the globalization of indifference as the source of so much suffering in the world today. Where do we want to get to this Lent? Today the Word of God tells us disciples where we do not want to go. Lent is not an excursion into self-improvement, or worse, self-delusion. Jesus reserves his harshest criticism for hypocrites, folks who pretend to have virtues, moral, or religious beliefs, and principles that they really do not have. A person who does not practice what she preaches. A guy who does not walk the talk. Don't go there, warns Jesus, for preening piety already has its dubious award. The prophet Joel proposes an alternate destination. Instead of a fatal withdrawal into ourselves, which is indifference, the prophet invites us to return to the Lord. Even now, return to the Lord. With all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Return to the Lord. If that's where we want to go, then the journey of these 40 days will look different than simply a retreat into our own stuff. Return to the Lord means that we reserve time to speak with our Father, and more importantly, to listen to God, who is not aloof from us. Perhaps then it's more important to fast from the internet or TV than from chocolate or desserts. Return to the Lord means that we wish to grow in friendship with Jesus. Perhaps we will pay greater attention each day to the Word of God, remembering the warning of Satan. Ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. Return to the Lord means that we recognize and accept more profoundly 
our kinship with all the members of the body of Christ, but especially the suffering. Pope Francis reminds us that the suffering of others is itself a call to conversion, since their need reminds me of the uncertainty of my own life and my dependence on God and my brothers and sisters. If we humbly implore God's grace and accept our own limitations, we will trust the infinite possibilities that God's love holds for us. We will be able to resist the diabolical temptation of thinking that by our own resources, we can save the world and ourselves. Return to the Lord means that we pray for a new heart, a heart like the heart of Jesus, a heart which is firm and merciful, attentive and generous, a heart which is not closed, indifferent, or prey to the globalization of indifference. The quest for a new heart may mean that we will be extraordinarily generous to our rice bowl or today's collection, which will support the soup kitchen of this cathedral. Return to the Lord means that we will humbly and gratefully receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation during the 40 days of Lent. Where do we want to go during this season, during this very acceptable time, this day of salvation? Lent is not about becoming the dust that will soon be placed on our foreheads. We are returning to dust, and like it or not, sooner or later, we'll all get there. Instead, the journey of Lent does not carry us into moroseness, but rather away from the morass of indifference. The journey of Lent is to return to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, please pray for me as I do for you, that we remember where we want to get to this Lent. The destination will determine the path that we walk.